We are getting ready because my friend Heather is coming over. She hosts a podcast that I was actually on like two years ago when I just started my trip to all the national parks. Today she's coming over to ask us a few questions about Ragbri. Heather and I actually went to school together and she started her podcast over two years ago. It's called 30 Paws and it's all about the idea that in your 30s you take a step back and really evaluate what you want to be spending your time doing and what you're working for overall. My big 30 Paws moment was when I quit my job to go travel full time. Now she's stopping back to see how it's going. And Courtney's going to join us because it's about rag bri, so we need the full story. But she should be here in about 10 minutes. So Ragbri is literally a seven day bike ride across Iowa. Mm -hmm. So we took a charter to the west side of Iowa and then rode our bikes back to the Mississippi River, literally. So Over it's from point A to point B, the entire length of Iowa. And it's a sanctioned race or sanctioned ride. It's not a race. Okay. Definitely not a race. That it's not a race. <laughs> yeah. It's a ride. So not okay. a ride. It's a ride, mm -hmm. which is true because it's about the experience. Mm -hmm. But every day the course is laid out for you. You know it ahead of time. You know the miles and the elevation gain and the different stops along the way. Mm -hmm. And the roads aren't closed down, but it's only open to local traffic. So there's just ten to 15,000 people out there biking with you. You can start any time during the day. We used the Ragbri truck to actually move our bags. Oh, so okay. between 5 and 8 a.m. or 6 and 8 a.m. No. We didn't know the beginning time. It wasn't important to us. <laughs> yeah. But by 8 a.m., we had to have our tent and bag packed up and put on this truck. So from how long are you riding? From 8 a.m., you're, like you're starting at 8 a.m. and then from what, 8 p.m.? Usually it was between four and five that we finished, and okay. we started usually between six and eight, depending on how long of a ride we had for the day. Um, and it was usually between seven and 10 hours in total each day that we were on our bikes. Granted, I will yeah. say there are um, towns that you stop in, so every eight to 10 miles, sometimes 15 to 20, you're going from one town to the next town and there's food vendors and a bunch of um, different places to stop and sit, shade. Mm -hmm. And then between each town, there's other stops that you can make across um, along the way. And it, um, you stop for 15 minutes or you stop for 30 minutes. Every lunch yeah. day was for an hour and we counted that into our time. So we were, you know, all traveling nine to 10 hours, but we mm -hmm. were sitting or relaxing or eating for probably two hours. Taking a break. Yeah. Yes. I gave you like a 12 hour, like being like, you're on the bike the whole oh, time. Right? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So you have breaks, but at the same time, how many days did this take you? Oh. The first day we rode was Sunday and we finished on a Saturday. So it's a full seven mm -hmm. days of biking. Yeah. And we camped every night. So it wasn't that, I mean, so we went the least expensive route. It's kind of an expensive endeavor, okay. I think, mm -hmm. based on the idea that you're just biking and sleeping in a tent. You would think it's inexpensive. Right. But it can be as expensive as you want. So the more comfort you want, you can pay for. We just did the basic rag bri entry. So every night we set up our tent, had all our camping gear, and packed it up in the morning. There's charters that you can use where they have the tent for you. So when you show up to town, the tent is already put up. I'd and probably get that one. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of that, <laughs> they had an option where they would actually bus you to a hotel every night. So they were able to find hotels wow. close enough. So you might even go for that. I would have gone the platinum package. Yeah. That's what I call the rag bri platinum package. Yeah, you would look yeah. more at like $200 extra per night. For the <laughs> for that $175. Yeah. And that's not really a vacation. I mean, you are working the whole time. But at the same time, comfort is key. And I really think that would be beneficial for people who are older or just need like that, that major like comfort for them to be able to continuously do it because this is an insane amount of miles and the physical exertion on top of just the mental game that's what I kind of want to get into with you guys of, of knowing that and doing it together yeah of course. <laughs> we, 
<laughs> you did it together. Yeah. Um, we had a backpacking tent. So okay. our tent is designed to go backpacking and we bought it specifically because it weighs less than five pounds. Okay. We got it when we went out to the Badlands last summer. Um, two summers ago. Okay, okay, two summers ago, yeah. yeah. So the, the result of that is that it's as wide as we are. So if we lay down in the tent, we're shoulder to shoulder, mm -hmm. and then our bags were under our feet. So because we have a lightweight two-person tent, it's pretty small. Yeah. And, and <laughs> our rag bride bags had to be under 50 pounds. So it was just funny because we would get the tent set up every night, and then we would leave the tent <laughs> yeah. until it was time to sleep. Like, wow. we would, there would be something else to do. I think we did end up taking a nap one time. Like, we got the tent set up, and then we fell asleep in it. <laughs> and it yeah. was, like, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. But it it's really neat because you're just, like, we slept at three or four baseball fields. Like, you're just at the town park, and everyone mm -hmm. has their tent set up. And it almost always was in a baseball diamond. We were at a fairgrounds twice mm -hmm. in different towns. So it's just so neat they have that space designated. Well, yeah. But you're, there's a lot of tents and you're very close. I was going to say. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not sure. Is this a campsite or is this, or is everybody okay? Does everybody have a home here? Yes. You know? I mean, if, you know, if any of us would just like stumble upon that and we saw that, <laughs> I would be kind of concerned, especially if you're not familiar with this. Yeah. You know? And this is just, why do you think people are attracted to something like Rag Bride? Why were you guys both attracted to it? <laughs> uh, for me, it was uh, pushing myself on a challenge that I knew I could probably do. I'm physically active. I like to get out into nature and see things. So I knew it was something that I was probably capable of doing. And to say I have done it, I think is a, a an accomplishment. So I think those were the key things where I'm like, yeah, we can do that and let's go do it. Let's go say we've done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say that's exactly what happened because my thought when we saw this last summer, it was the first time we heard about it, mm -hmm. was that we could go do it. And then we had winter here in the Midwest yeah. and it was February yeah. and then Courtney said we should go do it, which is a lot different than we can <laughs> to actually say we should. And so... Okay. In February, she had found a bike on Marketplace, a really nice road bike, and you decided to buy it. And so that night, we had to sign up for the ride yeah, and actually do it. So Courtney was the one who was like, let's go actually do it. She was the activator of this challenge. Yeah. Now, did you know that, like, were, you, were they starting to register people for this in the winter, I'm assuming? Yeah. I think it's in January that they open it up. For okay. the, the year that it's going to happen. Okay. And then there's like a certain deadline where it's going to cost this amount of money and then the, <laughs> the entry free fee goes up. So I'm like, well, we have to do it by March 1st because that was when the entry fee was going to go up. And we signed up, I think, on February 14th. Yeah. Amazing. Day. Happy Valentine's Day! Happy Valentine's Day! Day. Um, and then uh -huh. I had to go get a bike. How romantic! Like a, Let's yeah. just like <laughs> not right. really physically challenge ourselves <laughs> together. And then you know that is really kind of fucking cool. And <laughs> you know, and then it was winter. Oh. <laughs> and so yeah, it was exactly. winter, and uh, we couldn't bike. And we were like, what should we do? And then Courtney pointed out, this was around the same time that I had been to forty-eight states in one year. And if we just made the extra effort <laughs> and money to mm -hmm. go to Alaska and Hawaii, I'd make it to all 50 states in one year. So we signed up for Rag Bri in February. The first week of March, we were in Alaska for the Iditarod. Mm -hmm. We yes. maybe biked one time in March. We after good we weather. On. One week. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then we went to Hawaii at the end of April. So that is a lot of time where I don't know that we biked very much. So we went to Hawaii at the end of April, 50 states, all done, came home, and our focus was getting in enough shape for Rag Rye mm -hmm. that we could enjoy the ride. So yeah. we, they have an official training plan that you can do. It's a ton of miles every night and a schedule, mm -hmm. and we didn't do that. But what we did do was longer rides on the weekend. So our longest ride was how long? We ended up going 60 miles, and that probably was in June time period that we had worked up to 60 miles. We had started mm -hmm. like 25 and 30, and I think we did a 40 and then a 50. Just kept growing. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so we went to the past the Ohio State line. Went to the root beer stand in Antwerp. Perfect. Specifically, yeah. yeah it would be perfect, it. except for a root beer float halfway through a 63 mile ride is not the best Ooh. idea. <laughs> yeah, but those chili dogs were yeah. a good diet. Not a good choice, but that was a good thing to learn for run ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, on the ride, we had the ice cream, but we didn't have the ice cream and the hamburger or the ice cream and. Yeah, the exactly. You gotta, you gotta yeah. choose. It's like be miserable or have, you know, temporary satisfaction. You know, <laughs> food is one of the best things. But training wow. wise, before yes. we go, okay. training, we did the long rides on the weekend. We did multiple 40, 50 mile rides and one 63 mile ride. Mm -hmm. So every weekend we went on at least one long ride. Okay. And then during the week, we did a few over 20 miles, but usually it was 15. 10, 10 to 15. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so weeknights we would head out just on the trails here in Fort Miami yeah. mm -hmm. and try and get those in miles in we knew that training our bodies to pedal was half of it and training to be able to sit on a bike for a long period of time yeah. was the other half like we knew that that was going to be that a would be my biggest challenge is sitting i think on the bike after the ride and during the ride the sitting situation <laughs> without, getting, without getting into too many details yes. was, was the worst part of it I we had built like, up the leg muscles. Oh, um, yeah, I had some tension in my shoulder because I'm holding on to the, yeah. the, the, the handles. The handles, but the sitting was the worst part. You yeah. have shorts where you have padding yes. in the shorts. Yes, I would need. And then you also have what's called chamois butter, where it's like a cream that you Heard put in it. the areas down there yeah. to help with friction. Yeah, yes. definitely need that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you have to protect yourself down there, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's just so you are exerting physically. You like you said, you you know, shoulders, and I'm sure hips, knees, legs, and all that is just really engaged pretty much the whole time. But when you're sitting on your butt that long, mm -hmm. I mean, when you're done writing, do you just want to be horizontal? Do you want to stretch? I mean, where are you at physically? We did a lot did of, it vary? We did a lot of walking after, I think, where we would go and kind of keep our legs moving after we finished. Yeah. Um, it wasn't often, when, like you said, we took one nap immediately yeah. after. Um, but we did a lot of, I guess, we did some sitting, but also just kind of walking around the town a little bit. Um, we didn't do, so there's a party in town every night. So when we got off the bikes, I think we just used different muscles. Like you were tired, but you weren't necessarily like you couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. So it's different muscles. Well, and also with your road bikes, you're a bit more, you know, mm -hmm. hunched. This is, your spine is now completely erect so I don't think walking would be yeah kind of nice you know yeah. I'm thinking just physically how challenging it would be I mean for me I I'm not I don't enjoy being the fact that I'm like tied to a desk on a day-to-day -day basis I'm just more of a physical like I gotta move yeah because when I'm not I'm stiff but then the overexertion of being like super sore it's like oh my gosh like I need a like a hot yoga class and a good stretch <laughs> and then all right let's do this like <laughs> you know like yeah, yeah. I bet it was just was there any sort of physical um you know kind of soreness much days after once oh. you were all done I mean I'm sure it took you weeks to not be sore anymore right even the next day so we could walk around that night and we never relaxed really until we got the tent set up like the task wasn't done until the Tent was ready. Yeah, yeah. Because one night we waited to do like inflate your air mattress and stuff like that, and that was horrible. Because it was after had, dark and yeah. you couldn't see inside uh, the yeah. tent. Yeah. yeah. So we knew that you needed to get the tent set up every night. But I think the biggest moment of soreness is when you get on the bike the next morning. Mm. <laughs> and you're putting those muscles through yeah. and you're sitting right back on yeah. that seat. And one of my worst times during the whole ride. So Iowa is not flat. And I think that that's mm -hmm. the best thing to understand if you're wow. getting into this. Yeah. I'm used to driving across Iowa on I-80. Yeah. And it's graded out and it's made to be a highway that's easy to drive. Right? Mm -hmm. And you get <laughs> in both ends of Iowa. So the western side of Iowa is the Missouri River. And the eastern side is the Mississippi River. So okay. leading up to those rivers, there's lots of hills. Like 
big hills mm -hmm. um, that we don't have around here. So we really didn't train on hills. So the first day we head out of town and we did like eight miles really fast and we're like, yeah, we got this, like, yes. And someone said there's a hill headed out of town. The rest of the day was hills. Like it was just mm. hills. And then the next morning, everybody's like, oh, it's flat today. Like we're into the flat part. And we woke up and there were hills and I almost lost it. Like we stopped on the first hill and I was just like, this is not what I expected. <laughs> I am not enjoying this. I thought it would be flat and we just get to, because we don't yeah. get to ride next to each other as easily on hills. Sure. So you have to be, you have yeah. to get the work done. Yeah. And there's, you know, bikes all around you. So you can't just be slow next to each other. And then. Um, everybody's slow. It's not like yeah. and you always think you're the slowest, especially at the beginning of the week. You're like, oh, we're the slowest people here, but it's not. Everybody is getting the work done. Yeah, it is a grind to go up those hills. Like yeah. you're you're switching gear to the easiest gear, and you're just pedaling. And then obviously there's good bikers going very fast beside you, but you're just kind of grinding up it. Yeah. And the first day and second day. We walked up a handful of hills just to get through the day. Mm -hmm. yep. And it was worth it. We did, I mean, in the moment, you're like, oh, I can't believe I'm walking. But as the week went on, we became better cyclists, and we were able to bike more of the hills. But we still, on the last day, were walking some because they were so big mm -hmm. to finish. Yep. And sometimes we would hit wind, mm -hmm. and that was hard because you'd just be doing so much effort. And yeah. some of the, like the day before our 100-mile day, it the path went north more so it zigzagged to kind of get us in position to mm -hmm. then ride 100 miles and that was tough because then we were like biking west which is going to be windier and you're kind of heading like, into the wind yeah when you're going west mm -hmm. yeah 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 and we i was probably about 15 miles of the day before our 100 mile day we were just straight going into the wind and my neck was having a lot of issues mm -hmm. and I was just defeated because I'm like how are we gonna do this 100 mile day yeah. when the day before it was 56 miles so half mm -hmm. of what we were doing the next day and we were fighting that wind and I was very discouraged um, yeah but and yeah. after having you know discouraging days to me I was just telling you both earlier that I would not want to really socialize and or I want a nice delicatessen sandwich, a shower and, and go to bed, you know, and but this was these towns celebrated mm -hmm. um, all of the cyclists and participants. So what is it like? I mean, every night was it something different? And what were some like interesting, interesting things about some small Iowa towns that that you thought were funny, interesting, or just like, oh, it's a little different. <laughs> I know? will say that, so when you're on Rag Ride, they talk about Iowa nice, that everyone in Iowa is just it's so really nice. nice. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all the of Midwest. the towns, it was consistently people out cheering you on mm -hmm. from, I think we passed an elementary school with a bunch of little kids with signs to mm -hmm. a woman brought out her 101 year old mom oh in gosh. like a nursing bed and held up a sign and we pa passed by <laughs> her just crying like waving oh, at her so gosh. it was it was just it was friday morning yeah and we were just beat and oh. friday was hard because you don't like Saturday you finish the ride and yeah. Friday you're just tired yeah. and we were both just like oh you know like yeah. grinding through it and we see her out there waving at us and we're just like oh and yeah. we hit town and I'm just and she's like you can't cry because then I'm gonna cry and I'm like I'm already <laughs> crying and it was just the sweetest thing yeah and every time you felt that like that this is a uh, grind something like that would snap you out of it like oh, the cheerleaders that yeah. were outside their school like it's just that joy that everybody brought to it. So that's one part of Rag Bri is just everyone being out supporting you. So I would say that's a big takeaway for this ride for Iowa is that everybody's out supporting you. We saw some um, crazy bikers like doing uh, riding on like an elliptical bike. Um, okay. So different. We saw rollerbladers um, and a bunch of different type of cyclist so I wouldn't necessarily say that's in Iowa but a, a part of rag ride is people doing it in their own way so I thought that was really cool okay um, we went into it thinking or at least my mindset was that you need to be like a marathon 
like running mm-hmm. a marathon where mm-hmm. you're just dedicated to the training and you go there to perform the marathon and run like we thought it was about biking across to Iowa and the one thing we definitely learned is that it's about the experience as a whole mm-hmm. so you're responsible for biking and getting yourself across to Iowa but along the way you're going to have these towns that have special events around this or Like when you get breakfast, it benefits the football team or the 4-H or what were some of the other church 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 groups. And so when you're in town, the money you spend buying lunch goes to those groups. And the fire department and everybody is just there to support you and they're excited about it. So when you get to town at night, Mm -hmm. you have a place to camp. It's already designated. You know where you're going. And when you get there, you get your tent set up and then they have another party in town. Okay. So... There was a few nights when we didn't go experience Yeah, it. and I think those were our nights where we were had some frustration through the day. Like, we knew we needed to get food for the evening to fuel <laughs> us for the next day. Mm-hmm. So we tried to stick around the camp and find, like, one day we got a turkey leg. And it <laughs> benefited a high school um, redoing their, their football stadium. Uh-huh. Um, we uh, another night did at a campground. Honey, I'm down for a turkey leg. Yeah. <laughs> she, she Especially walks, at the Ren Fair, okay? <laughs> Been there, done that. She walks up to the concession stand <laughs> and she goes, we'll have two turkey legs. And I'm like, who are you here with? We're feeding an army, yeah. let's go. And two I, turkey legs, rack them up. <laughs> I was like, we'll have one turkey leg and if we want another one, we're gonna be sitting right here. We'll have to get a second turkey leg. But another night. Right, <laughs> she was hungry. Yeah. She was not <laughs> She did share. Yeah. Of, but we got so many snacks because, like, all the snacks were a dollar. So we yeah. like, had three bags of Doritos. Yeah. Exactly. Rice exactly. Yeah. exactly. And another night we went to a campground. That's where we were um, camping that night and got pulled pork nachos because they had concessions and, like, mm-hmm. a soft pretzel. And that's all we had for dinner because that's all we could eat to survive to the next day. We didn't want to go venture to the downtown yeah. party. Yeah. Um, we went to a taco dinner at a church, and so they just had, like, you walk by and they make your well, tacos, and then you, yeah, carry on. Was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just that true, that they, like, I feel like after oh, hearing Iowa this, nice. it's that yeah. true Iowa nice, but it's also, I feel like that true Midwest oh, nice. nice, and it's just yeah. so crazy being back here and almost <laughs> forgetting that, like, oh. nice people existed like that in this way. You know, I've had very many, like, visitors and friends. Um, and just kind of like, wow, everybody is just so nice. And I'm like, that also is really so endearing, but also so wholesome. And just like, wow, you are just really nice. Like, this is probably, you know, you you all probably, cyclists involved too, brought a lot of joy and um, a mission uh, for them to continue to celebrate their town and their community and they wanted to show that off they wanted to show that off to you guys that's what I'm just hearing and I think that's just amazing that Iowa nice but also it's just really that's the cult that's the Midwest culture but the bike ride started with just two people from the Des Moines Register riding across to Iowa because they wanted to see more of the state mm-hmm. and it just developed from there 49 years ago now it's year 50 next year is the 50th anniversary of Mm -hmm. the ride Mm -hmm. and it's bloomed to so many people but people still camp in the front yard of other people people will set up a lemonade stand in their front yard we stopped to pet someone's goats and a cow like they'll bring their tractors out and maybe they're not out there that day but their tractors are lined up so that you can see their old tractors Growing up in Ohio. Poor friend. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we had tractor day mm-hmm. in our high school. Drive you know, your tractor to drive school. Drive the tractor to school day. I was that member, existed. I was a member of FFA my yes. senior year. Just so year. was I. Yeah. That's a floral design. Yeah. Yeah. It's just senior year. Yeah. And, we, you know, we took so many bullshit like business classes. Class. That yeah. was like business class. But honestly, day. floral design really triggered some creativity, and I was yeah. really loving it. See? So I was like, you know... <laughs> It's just a Midwest. It is. But we yeah. stopped and um, people so had boots, you know, we took it off. Yeah, they had like their hose on and a sprinkler so you could drive through their sprinkler because it's oh. July. And yeah, it's not, I mean, like, there's no shade. Or yeah. fill up your water bottle between towns. Like, it's just 
it was perfect. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody who, like, he had his little baby calves there, and he was headed to 4-H Fair next week. Like, you just ne so free sweet. beer. I was gonna say my favorite part of it <laughs> was, was free the, beer. The the free beer. Last day was on. Yeah, last day. Yeah. One day yeah. we had we split them usually because it is a lot. We were trying to bike all the things. Other yeah. people are there to party for sure, so they're okay. soaking in all of the beer. It's not all free. Okay. But one day we had three beers and they were all free. No. Well, hey, okay, I'm not mad about that. No. If it's free, it's for me. That's yeah. right. We obviously stopped at the one because it was a combine with a big bush light. Yeah. And then we had an ice cold bush light. Like, it was the best bush light I'll probably oh, ever yeah. have. Oh, yeah. I mean, and also, you guys, the, like you said, the sun is probably beating down it was on you. Yeah. It's but, yeah. still hot. It was <laughs> doesn't hot. matter. Yeah. It's not like you got this cool breeze, you know, unless it's a heavily tree. No, I'm thinking this is, this is like acres upon acres of farmland oh, and yeah. vast areas, you know? So it's not like you have a whole lot of shade to run into. We were joking about corn and cows and then yeah. cows and corn. Like it's <laughs> corn and cows, cows, cows and corn. Cows and corn. We were gonna create a TikTok <laughs> yeah, we didn't with, get with a song. <laughs> Cows and corn. Cows. Corn and cows. Yeah. I don't corn know. And cows. It's cows and corn. <laughs> we, could, we could do a little ditty. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling. So I did see in memory of John Karras. Yeah, so he was one of the first founders of the ride. It was in his memory that we did the 100-mile ride. Okay. So they haven't done a 100-mile day, which for cyclists is called a century day. So anytime okay. you bike over 100 miles, yeah. it's called a century day. And it's a big milestone within cyclists to Ooh. do a 100-mile day. To complete yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Check mark Ooh. on that one for okay. us. Good but for y'all, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Snap. <Yeah. laughs> they haven't done it for 30 or 40 years, and they decided in his memory that we would add that this year mm -hmm. so we're signing up for the race in february and we're like 105 miles like are you sure and it's like oh sure and that was kind of our motivation for training so yeah. when we didn't want to ride on a wednesday night or go for a long ride on a weekend and spend our day doing that it was to get ready for that 105 mile day mm -hmm. and so when we showed up to rag ride the 105 mile day was day four wednesday and we spent the days before that kind of getting ready for it. Mm -hmm. And we know that when we were on that 105 mile day, like we ticked off the miles, we finished 20 miles by eight, 18 eight, in the morning. And yeah. then we finished 40 miles by 10. And we wow. stopped for lunch at 58 miles at like 1120. Mm -hmm. But then we finished 80 miles at like 212. So we were like 20 miles every two hours with stops and breaks. Uh -huh. Y'all were kind of booking it. We felt yeah. like we were booking it. And yeah. we finished at 425 in the afternoon when we expected, when we signed up for the ride, right. that we were going to be finishing at 8, 9 o'clock. We at were night. Come in late at night. Yeah. So it was a huge accomplishment for us to be able to do that century ride and to feel so good through the whole day, given the fact that we had some rough days before. Mm -hmm. We ended up having some rough days after, but being able to do that century ride and the amount of time that yeah. we did was a huge accomplishment. Knowing that we didn't ride bikes before February of that same year. Yeah. So. Yeah, my longest bike ride had been 16 miles. In your entire life. Yeah. And Once. maybe 10 to 12 for me. One time. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it was the peak of our cycling career for sure. Like, we at 80 miles just felt so good. It was flat road and we were just cruising along. And we were just like, this is it. This is mm -hmm. awesome. And then uh, the last 15 were a little rough. Yeah. Admittedly. <laughs> uh, we were just trying to get to town. I but, bet. But that night, they had Sugar Ray. That was the Sugar Ray concert. Yes. And so okay. we definitely made it to town for yeah. Sugar Ray. And and a in a timely manner. So yeah. you and Mark McGrath could just <laughs> have, a few, have a few bush lights in Iowa. And, hey, huh? She did yeah. hit up the brewery. I yeah. Guess, so she got a I mean, I would have her every time. I would have, like, cheers to my GD self because, yeah. wow. I mean, it's such an accomplishment, you know. And, Laura, you know, with our first experience on 30 Pause, you were sharing the fact that you're, you know, you built out this van and you're like, all right, I quit my job and I'm just deciding to travel for a whole year and I'm going to hit all the national parks in the United States, which is a feat within itself. And so now that you've accomplished that and you and Courtney are 
in your home and you're getting comfortable and you're establishing normalcy and then you're like, boop, I'm ready for another challenge. We want to do this together, which I um, find it so adorable and so admirable. But also, like, what is it that for you and, you know, personally in, and individually, I'm asking you both, like, per, what is it your, like, your motivation to want to consistently challenge yourself in these ways? And or not only physically, but just like live a such non-traditional life in such a traditional uh, setting like the Midwest, you know, like this is not something that we can really like say a whole lot of people our age in this area would be like, yes, I'm, I'm, I am foregoing all of these adult landmark so-called successes and I'm actually doing what I want to do. You know, and I'm living my authentic truth myself, and I want to challenge myself. So for you, it's obviously personal, but what is it that you want to continue to do these these adventurous things like this? I think that you, it's just that you get to learn so much about yourself. Yeah. So you asked earlier why other people do Rag Fry, mm -hmm. and I think that so many people sign up for it because it's just seven days. Like you can yeah. do anything for seven days and seven day challenge is long enough for you to enjoy it, for it to be really hard, for you mm -hmm. to have to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll enjoy it again. There's lots of really good food, yeah. which we could talk about. And yeah. there's so many people that it's really nice, but it's seven days. So you show up on a Saturday, you start biking Sunday and you finish the next Saturday and it's laid out for you. So it's really uh, something that you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And we're so used to the seven day vacation so yeah. working a full-time job, it's usually acceptable to take seven days of vacation. Mm -hmm. But to take more days than that, like Courtney took the Friday before and the Monday after also as vacation, and that's kind of getting to the limit of people asking about how much vacation you're taking at one time. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't have that limit. And it's so nice to be able to go do something like that and those people are there and they're soaking it up and I expect that most of them were employed. <laughs> yeah. They have 15,000 people doing something. Earning some sort of not be a part of this. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But I'm sure, I have no doubt mm -hmm. that there's a group of us that aren't and we get to go on to the next adventure mm -hmm. and I get to look at uh, hiking trips that are maybe 21 days that are the same. It's laid out for you. It's something that's accomplishable, like that you can organize enough to make it happen, mm -hmm. but it's not seven days. So then you start to learn even more about yourself, like traveling to all the states. I hit 52 national parks now. There's points when you don't want to be doing it. And sometimes yeah. you'll be like, I, don't you just want to go home? Yes. <laughs> Like and I, for me, yeah. I'm like, that's so amazing. But for a whole year, I would just kind of want to go home. Yeah, and right? I did. I did yeah. come home a few times, but there were trips that were really long. Um, my first trip was just six weeks, I think, and that got me into it. And then they started to be two months, and then it was longer. And I remember there's times when you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. When I was on the California coast, it just wasn't a comfortable place to be living in the van. Mm -hmm. because you don't have as many places to stay because there's so many people okay and I didn't have good service so I was like trying to call Courtney at the end of her work day to see how her day was mm -hmm. and I'm driving along the beautiful California coast like highway one between San Francisco and LA like all this stuff and there's fog mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can't see as far and everything's just farther away than you think and I'm like driving along later in my day can't call you and it's just a frustrating moment but you have to kind of pull yourself back in and be like, you probably aren't going to get to drive along the California coast every year. Like this isn't a thing you get to do a whole lot of times. Mm -hmm. So you need to soak it in. And then you get out and you, there was like elephant seals and like, yeah. you know, it's just crazy things are happening. Yeah. And when you're in an experience like that, when you force yourself to actually jump in and push yourself past when you want to go home mm -hmm. and keep going it makes a huge difference and then you realize that you can do that again and again and again it's almost just like now it's like cool I can actually face any adversity that comes at me and I can be like well, shit that sucks but I'll handle it yeah you know because I, you've trusted yourself yeah within that experience 
Well, I think things like that and moments like that, it forces you to stay in the present. Right. Right? So a lot of times when my anxiety and fear take over, it's like, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. And we overthink ourselves. I think that's just naturally what we do a lot of times. So I just think that's just such a amazing way to kind of have a, a build your own like personal growth and development and how you want to pursue and live your life. I yeah. think that's a lot more uh, courageous and brave than I think a lot more people are giving recognition to because it is considered just like I said, it's kind of non-traditional. It's just like, you know, do you have a plan? What are you going to do? And I mean, I'm sure just because of, you know, our parents' age and that's just something that I'm, I'm sure that many conversations happen with them just because it's just so... Okay, well, what are you gonna do? What you plan? You know what I mean? I yeah. understand that. I get that because I think a lot of times when you don't have, um, you know, similar like paths as other folks around, and you're not part of the Joneses, you're kind of a Jackson over here. <laughs> and, you know, you're yeah. just like, all right, well, that's okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna do this, and this is my, this is my life. This is my journey. And this is. How I want to live it. I think that's just super courageous and brave and very admirable of you both yeah. being able to do that and live this lifestyle and knowing and showing people it's actually feasible. Yeah, it's and, feasible. And I think it's even feasible with having a job. So I have a little bit yeah. of a different perspective. Than and I was going to get into this, but I'm so glad that we are <laughs> segueing right into it. Yeah, and I, um, for me, I you know have a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. um, pretty successful at what I'm doing right now, but I also don't want to live in the mon mundane of it. Yeah. Um, I want to see more things. I want to make sure that my seven days of vacation mm -hmm. is doing a challenge that's going to push, push me. And I learned so many different things about myself during that seven days that I'm capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can spend my time doing an adventure like that and then jumping back into work. But I I want to still live that comfortable life of being able to have that income, but also be able to make sure I budget the time for my vacations to go see things. Yeah. I don't want to be stuck in just a Midwest bubble. I, I know there are so many different things out there to Absolutely. see. Yeah. Um, and I know that tomorrow's not necessarily guaranteed. Mm -hmm. When I was 19, I lost my mom and that changed my perspective yeah, of sure. my entire world, knowing that at, at 19, that you know life is fleeting and yeah. could change in any perspective. So um, having that experience has taught me to be able to think about you know bigger things yeah and to not just live in this this small bubble so well and you're choosing to navigate your life and be the driver and not the passenger and I think a lot yeah. of times uh, people become comfortable and are passive with you know how they're living their life and, and it's nice and fun to kind of shake things up and be like actually no I don't have to do that and there's everything is is you know figure outable mm -hmm. you know and you two are just like living proof of that too that it is feasible it is figure outable um it does take sacrifice you know things like that but at the same time if you're confident in your own intelligence and your own intuition do it yeah. absolutely so um because i know that you can have different levels of this drag bride experience. I just wanted to get into um, how much it really costs for you both to do this experience and what it could cost based on the experience you want. It's really essentially what's your budget and what you can do within that week. So I'm more budget conscious because I don't have a job. Yeah. But <laughs> Courtney being employed, she's ready for events like sure, this. Sure, sure. And I expected that this would be an inexpensive experience because you're responsible for yourself. You bring your own bike and they just give you a spot to camp every night and then they move your bags. But each of us spent $175 to register for the ride. Mm -hmm. And then the thing we did add on is we got on a charter so they have charters we parked in lansing iowa which is where you end the ride okay so courtney paid 95 dollars to park the car in lansing iowa for the week 
with all of the other cars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they just had a big lot where they parked everybody. And then we got on a charter that actually took us from Lansing to Sergeant Bluff, which is where the, the ride started. Was so okay. Like five and a half hour charter. I was going to say, how long was that? Which was so, com- I mean, it was really comfortable, charter bus. Okay. We could stop along the way, restroom in the back, and they shipped our bikes. So we were able nice. to drop our bikes off on Friday night. We stayed at a hotel that night and then got on our bus Saturday morning. So do you believe that just within those logistics and the transportation itself, besides the parking fee of $95, that your registration and your ticket on top of it would be included because of all of that? Like, are those charters included with your 175 ticket? No, it's on top of. So we paid okay. $175 more each to do that. Got it. The yeah. only way to avoid that would have been having two cars for us because we came out of state. Other sure. people, no people in Iowa, and yeah. they drive them there. Yeah. Uh, but we came from out of state, so sure. we either could have taken two cars or asked someone to go to Iowa with us to then go back, which we would maybe do in the future. But being our first time, it was a really good experience to just have the charter that took us. And with the gas and gas prices right now, it probably would have been a wash or close to maybe save a little bit. We met a few people that were going by themselves and that would have been 100% the way to go. If it was just, mm-hmm. you know. Individually. Yeah. 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 So if you're going by yourself, you can do it. Now, from the point of actually getting dropped off in Sergeant Bluff, we were kind of on our own. Okay. And what Rag Bride does provide is that a semi truck that actually moves your bag every day. Mm-hmm. So your bag can only be up to 50 pounds and then you put it on the truck in the morning and then you pick it up in the end town, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a really good thing. As far as expenses, the most expensive thing was food. So mm-hmm. Courtney was actually on the Facebook newbie, or sorry, the Rag Bride Newbies Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they were talking about how much cash to take. And oh. she's like $35 a day per person. And I'm like, what? And then somebody commented that it should be $70 a day per person or something crazy. And I'm like, we just can't take that much cash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how do you do that? Also, I don't like carrying that much yeah. cash. Yeah, either. we're just not used to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But luckily, Courtney did that research. She kind of got us on track. We ended up together spending $530 on food. We did budget $50. We ended up budgeting $50 a day per person. So we took $400... $400? You did. Yeah. I stuck with the 35 <laughs> I took $400 for the whole week. I stuck She's with like, and that's that. Okay? Yeah. I stuck yeah. with the $35 a day, and I remember on the end of day two, you're like, I can fall in our money and put it away because it's extra. And I'm like, I'm going to be hungry tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of sticking, like, if it wasn't $35 a day, then I don't need it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was on a budget. Yeah. Which part it wasn't, but food was one of the best parts of the trip because you don't know what you're going to find. Yeah. Like, I had a ribeye sandwich or Oof. the ice cream sandwiches, Thelma's ice cream sandwiches, and so that's like $5 a piece, and mm. so like $5, $10 just yeah. flies. Yeah, it goes quickly. Yeah. 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 And especially when we're not used to carrying cash. Cash. Well, and cash does go quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's free because yeah. it's cash. Yeah. Um, so, all together, like mm-hmm. our gas to get out there. The entry, the charter, we ended up spending together fifteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So fifteen hundred and forty dollars, which I think is something I didn't necessarily expect. It was higher than I expected. Mm-hmm. But once you get there, you see that you can spend just so much money, and it just depends on how comfortable you want to be. So we were we spent time at like pavilions on two nights charging our phones. And there's actually a charging service. So you go to the place, you pay $65 for the week, you grab an external battery, and then okay. the next day you exchange it for one that's charged. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say, I was like, $65, so you're going to charge it one time? Yeah, right. Okay, all right. I was, I was like, yeah. wait a minute, I don't think this is a deal bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like, we took two external chargers. Yeah. Like, you can take those mm-hmm. things. Yeah, of course. And yeah. there are things that I have for backpacking. You got one for backpacking. Like... You can kind of take your gear and save money. Yep. If you don't have a tent, you can pay for the charter to put up your tent and take it down. Mm -hmm. They have food and entertainment at night if you do a full week charter. And you can even go to the hotel, like we talked about. And some charters have free beer. You just bring your cup Mm -hmm. 
And you know, sometimes us, we spent probably $20 a night to have beer if, if we wanted it. Yeah, they also yeah. have showers included. Yeah. So we spent, we ended up spending $32 because it's $8 per shower. Mm. So twice we, two nights, and it doesn't seem like enough. We spent $32 <laughs> on showers. Yeah, we, we like were so clean. <laughs> We were just the cleanest. <laughs> I even talk about in the video, like, no one's going to steal your stuff because, like, they have their own smelly stuff. They don't want yeah. to steal <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, But even when you pay for the charter for the week, the week long, they include your showers, but it's still going to be in a semi-truck. So you can pay more for how comfortable you want to be. That makes sense. So what are the demographics and how young and old are people doing this? Because this is a physical mental task That's for lack of better words I expected when we started signing up that or when we signed up in a moment <laughs> mm -hmm. I expected that everyone who I expected that 90% of the people doing this would be on road bikes they'd be geared out clipped into their pedals like people who rode bike on a regular okay, basis buddy. absolutely curious right. George yeah seriously <laughs> When we got there, that was maybe 20% of the riders. The majority of riders were probably like us, like recreational weekend warriors. Riders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, people yeah. who were just there. Weekend to have warriors. Yeah. Yeah. But then there were all kinds of bikes. So I had a hybrid bike. You had a road bike. A mm -hmm. lot of people had road bikes, and they were riding in pelotons, which is a group of bikers mm -hmm. that go by you. Like okay. that's a thing. So they would be there. But we saw an elliptical bike. Rollerblade by rollerbladers, uh -huh. a bunch of uh, tandem bikes, recumbent bikes, so people who sit really low to the ground in a very comfortable seat. Yes, I see that. In front I see of them, that. like two wheel and three wheel recumbents. And the thing that surprised me the most is e bikes. And I thought that it would just not be a thing to see an e bike. And the first day I saw people riding in e bikes, I was like, well, that's odd. And then it just like was so cool that they can have an e-bike and be out there riding and doing it like it just allows so many more people to come in and have the experience absolutely it doesn't take away from my experience at all that okay. someone is on an e-bike okay so the idea that anybody can do it as long as you can sit on the bike seat but there's just so many ways to do it and that's something i didn't think of before going yeah and i think maybe would people think Otherwise, in the sense of like, oh, e bike, well, that disqualifies you because you have a little motor like up to your bike. Like, yeah, and I you heard know? somebody say, like, oh, e bike, of course. Uh -huh. But then somebody else said that they don't get the assist, like the rider assist, unless they're pedaling, which I've never ridden an e bike. Oh. So you don't get the battery to kick in unless you're moving the pedals. Oh. But who cares? Like, if yeah. they're, like at least yeah. they're not like a motorcycle. You know, it's yeah. not the yeah, same. It's different. Yeah. But they're still doing something and they're still, still out there and they won't have it. So yeah. there were, that enabled a lot of different people to come in. And some people, it just gave them the confidence to be out there. Yeah. yeah. And that was really neat. And I think we saw nine year olds, 10 year olds doing it. A couple little girls, like three girls, like you knew that they were best friends probably eight to ten years old just riding and their moms were right behind them Aww. and then there were you know people probably in their 70s or 80s out there as well yeah. yeah and you don't have to do the whole week so we signed up for a week-long ride and one of the things we kind of found out is some of the regulars they just sign up for a day or two or wow. if they're riding through your town you could just sign ride up for that day. specific yeah. day oh that's so nice I didn't think I thought you got to start <laughs> You start know? here at the, this line and finish here at this line. And know? that's like our mindset. Like, you yeah. Have it to count. Like a race. You have like a, yeah. yeah. Like we're For it to count. Yeah. It, to it. it ain't to be fair and square. Yeah. 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 And it's just not true. It's not true. That's yeah. so cool. It's an I, experience. Well, that's super informative because I would not think of it that way. And also, it's just kind of fun to see from a nine year old to a 72 year old yeah. out there doing it. You just know? little, like, 12 inch tires just pedaling along like yeah one of the girls that we saw and it was just like that's cute but oh it looks like a hard day <laughs> or like the kid on the back like the parent pedaling yeah and there's a, like an attachment you can do where they ride on the back oh yeah and the experience of riding 
people have, you're not supposed to wear headphones because okay. you need to be able to like hear everyone. That's and true. Enough That's people. safety yeah. wise, yeah. Absolutely. So people had microphone, what do you call them? Uh, speakers. Speakers, <laughs> opposite. Okay. People had speakers on their bike. So for they music? would just be blasting their yeah. music from yeah. their phone. Yeah. And so while people passed us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't while we passed them, it was while they yeah. passed us. It would just be all kinds of different music throughout mm-hmm. the day. And it would just be interesting, like classic rock or pop, or you just never knew. And it was just fun to kind of just sing along with that song. Oh, even yeah. if it was just 30 seconds until well, the next thing of music came I think out. that also kind of can distract you a little bit from oh, love it. the yeah. actual physical like task at hand or just kind of, you know, take your mind out of it and you're not, you know, focusing because not only do I think it's like I think it'd be more mentally exerting than physically exerting. The hours, yeah. just the hours. So you're just on the road, this like, thing, and there's day. bumps on the road, so it's just like bump up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh. I mean, but at the same time, it's good to know that everybody. It's a universal event, mm-hmm. right? Everybody is encouraged to join, whether they can do the full seven days, whether they're able to do just a day. That's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking to myself, like, um, what if you got a popped tire? What if you're, you know, you have a cramp in your foot and now, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't, yeah. like, do you need that safety and security because this is not just some little feet. This is 462 miles? Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah. One of the RAGBRAI teams mm-hmm. is the Air Force. Oh wow! And it's a known team. They celebrated like their 25th anniversary. This is just whispers on the camera. He's just a little pass. So the Air Force team rides their bike every day, mm-hmm. and if someone is on the side of the road, two of them will pull off and help. Wow! Yeah, it's amazing, and it's such a nice relief to know that there's people. And I don't well, know there's eight. how official that is. Yeah. Because if not, you have to take the sag wagon. Any other like tidbits or things that you want to share for people who want to experience this rag brag like adventure and and or maybe I've heard of it or just something that some insight that you wish you knew but now you know definitely train Kara and Nate on okay. YouTube okay. they go everywhere it's awesome yeah they popped up in Iowa got a tandem bike didn't train at all and did it Ooh. and I don't know how they're alive. Yeah. Yeah. I've done other things without training. <laughs> yeah. And survived. Yeah. So I would never have done as much training if Courtney wasn't there being like, let's do it. But the more training you do, the more you'll enjoy the experience. Would you do it again? And if so, what would you do differently? I first am going to talk about the day that we finished. Okay. Like the, the, okay. The feeling of finishing. Oh, wow. A seven day, 462 mile feat was just something that overwhelmed probably both of us um, coming to that finish line, seeing the Mississippi River. So I think that was something that I'll take with me for the rest of my life and knowing that I did that experience. And I think overall, just doing it and knowing that I can do it. And seeing the people of Iowa was a once in a lifetime experience for me to where I don't think it's something that I necessarily need to do again. I, <laughs> yeah. I, under, I understand why people do it year after year and mm-hmm. it's those that are cyclists and, and maybe it's a tradition for them. Yeah. Or, and yeah. and yeah. they yeah. grew up in Iowa and it's something that they, you know, look forward to every year. Mm-hmm. I think for me, having done it, I'm, I'm really happy that I did and that experience like the whole week I was thinking about the day that I was going to finish and the moment that I was going to reach that finish line so that was very rewarding for me um, and I appreciate that experience and I will probably for the rest of my life but I don't know that it's something that I need to do on a regular basis or do again yeah. um, I'm happy that I did it um, what are your thoughts you finish the ride by putting your front tire in the Mississippi River. So it's just this moment, like literally there's a boat ramp, you walk down and you dip your tire in the river. So it's just this big, like you're waiting in line to dip your tire, because there's so many people. Yeah. (laughs) So it's just this, like there's no finish line that you ride under, like that moment isn't there. Yeah. But it's just this thing like you did it. And you just think about dipping your tire in the Mississippi the whole time and lifting your bike above your head. And so that moment really did drive us 
I think two things during the week, the hundred mile day, because we wanted to kick it in the butt, and then that finishing were the things that kind of drove us to do it. Mm -hmm. I think the farther you get away from an experience like that, the more likely you are to do it again. Yeah. (laughs) Because you're chasing the feeling you just described. That being said, knowing that there's a bunch of adventure to be done, Mm -hmm. I was watching someone's YouTube video last week and they said, all I have to do today is pack up my tent and get on my bike and ride to the next town. And I was just like, oh, like even having done it Mm -hmm. and knowing that that's all they had to do, there was just that feeling of nostalgia. Like, I want to have that feeling again. Like, yeah. And I feel like if we did it again, we would know that it's about the experience and mm-hmm. not about the bike ride to the next town. Um, I probably wouldn't train enough, and so then it would end up horribly. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I yeah. I would do it again. Yeah. But I don't know if I need to do it again next year. Next year is the 50th anniversary, yeah. and there's supposed to be a huge party. They'll probably ride through Des Moines and, like, just have a crazy yeah. day. Well, I can so. imagine a 50th anniversary of any event like this at this capacity. You, you're you talking 15,000 participants? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's probably going to be quite the soiree of sorts. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you would do it again. Um, would you do it again next year if somebody said, hey, Laura, we have you a free ticket and a you know five hundred dollar sponsorship pass for a b and c you would do it solo yeah I'd yeah, probably I mean, do it with her I mean, of course <laughs> you go with her yeah yeah I, I don't need to do it again but I would do it again yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you actually when you have those what incentives did you, thrown did you just say five hundred dollars yeah we just like agreed for five hundred dollars yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah about like a free a free registration ticket and you know like something like that. Even before you like sweetened the pot, yeah, I was like the fact that I'm wavering right now. Yeah, is that in a few months it's gonna be a yes. The fact that you're wavering right now just really tells the viewers that this is obviously something that you've done, and you'll do it again. I think that people do it over and over again because it's this like structure. Okay, Raymond. <laughs> Mr. Raymond were so big that one day I got to 38. I broke 30 like 10 times. I got to on 30. your bike. Yeah. yeah. And that I is that kind of scary though. I, I ran, yeah. She was like, I was like, she was like all for a ride. <laughs> and I'm going 30 and I'm like breaking. Yeah, yeah. I and don't mean how big it is. It's like skiing when you're going down the hill too far and you're like, and cross, 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 cross. cross, 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 cross. <laughs> That's the same as I feel. I'm like, and we're going a little too fast. I was yeah. like, I did the work to get up that hill. Yeah. 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 You're going to be like, I'll go catch Courtney on the other side. Yeah. <laughs>